quick. I'm Mark Godoy. I skate when I'm not surfing. I'm Steve Godoy and I surf when I'm not skating. When the Company Rejects album came out called The Power and the Glory and that all those guys had tattoos. We were already into punk rock since we were kids. So it was natural that when we saw that we were wanted to be like the people that we listened to, you know. That's pretty much what inspired us to start tattooing. Right before we got out of high school in 84, we were doing homemade jobs on ourselves and we weren't really gonna get into tattooing for a job. That was just like accidental because our dad spent our college fund. We wanted to go be pastry chefs. As weird as that may sound, we wanted to go learn how to cook and do that kind of shit. But um, it didn't work out like that. I think it's great how it evolved, how it happened. Because in the beginning when we first started, we decided we had to graduate from homemade pokes with safety pins and exacto blades to using real machines and learning how to do it the right way. Which was a bitch back then. Yeah. It wasn't easy like now. We're all self-taught. Yeah, a lot of the artists that lived in the town when we started tattooing, we lived in Dallas, Texas, and nobody wanted to teach us anything. But before that, when we lived back east, it was even harder because everybody was, it was biker owned and operated, and there's no way you're getting in, in, in there. Yeah. In 1977, because uh, that's when we got into skateboarding and punk rock, hence the safety pin there. All the little lines like these, the lettering, you can tell it's still homemade pokes, but everything else. I had to reline because it was starting to fade out. That was first that Art did with a safety pin in black ink. First tattoo that Art ever did with a machine. When we graduated from safety pins and black ink to tattoo machines with real needles and the very first stuff that we did was homemade. That was mainly on our left arms because we were right handed, we poked ourselves. But we've recently since cleaned it up and all this is cover over. So this was like years of experimenting, getting better and then finally getting good enough to get rid of the old junk. We told each other that when we got better, we'd fix it. And so, <laughs> we fixed it. <laughs> our right arms were collector's arms. Those were the arms that we collected from other artists, and our left arms were pretty much our own. We could practice on ourselves. Managing a skateboarding career and working full-time in a shop, apprenticing, couldn't do it. So we'd take our shit on the road, and in the hotel rooms, we'd just practice on each other. Whenever we'd go to contests, we would take the money that we uh, were given by the companies for food, per diem that was called, we spent it on tattoos, so most of the time at contests we'd be hungry. Moved to Texas, where we met Jeff Phillips and Craig Johnson, all the Texas guys, that's where we got first got sponsored. It was always been our dream to be pro skateboarders. They gave us a big push, Jeff Newton from Zorlac, and we wanted to turn pro, so we turned pro in 85 in Virginia Beach. We were bums, we lived outside. Just drove our big car the whole way from Pennsylvania, up to skate with Fred Smith and those guys up in Boston, drove all the way down to Texas, lived there, lived outside, out on the street, we moved to California, we were pro by then. We got in Rolling Stone, this was 1987, we're at the bottom, we're still more tattooed than everyone else. <laughs> Scroungy, we couldn't even afford to buy razors. <laughs> Fucking scumbags. <laughs> Got kicked off of a couple of companies, quit a couple of companies, made enemies and friends along the way, buy around. 88, 89, we had our own company, Iron Cross Skateboards, which was backed by H Street. Shit went sour. We quit that whole deal. And skateboarding was changing anyway. Little wheels, little boards, we just couldn't adapt. We weren't in the street. All the parks were closing, so we still skate. We tried to do the best we could to get equipment, and here we are still to this day skating. For just about every company we rode for, we drew our graphics. Whenever we had our own pro models. So, and for other people too. Well, we also used to do a lot of t-shirt art for like O'Neill. We've done some shit with Quicksilver, Pirate Surf when they were around. A lot of people. They were always straight when they did drugs to do. It's funny getting stereotyped. People think that you have done it when you haven't done it. Just because of how we look. Great. We could always build and tune machines, but we didn't really put any effort into manufacturing until I would say like 98. Right before my brother moved, we started making molds for stuff and we were doing our own coils. And we have two things that are patented right now, and yeah, that's our side thing. We just did everything along the way together, so yeah, that's our, each other was our inspiration. Ah, come on!
We started tattooing in 85. For us, it's not a fad. We never decided to jump on some tattoo bandwagon because somebody else did. We never really made money in skateboarding, so for us, tattooing was really the only option in order to make ends meet and supplement our income. I mean, when we're getting a $4 check for royalties from a company that we're not going to mention, you know, and how are you supposed to live? So anyway, that's our, that's our angle. It's our life. We tattoo, skate, punk rock. Anything else? That's it. We're pretty much blackballed, I would say, because of our attitude. And now it's so accepted, I guess it's like we're ahead of our time.